Hey, welcome to Ra'adif Shabbat class, Parashat Haye Sarah. Let's talk about Sarai Menu. Even though Sarai Menu in this parasha is not living, it's uh, after her death. But the Torah seems to ask of us, maybe even beg of us, to look at her life. And I'll explain why in a moment. And it is the case that in the last two parashua, we were honing in like a laser beam on the life and times of her husband, Abraham Avinu, and Sarah, to a certain extent, maybe got lost by, uh, you know, in the in the drama of her husband. And uh, let's let's try to dive in to the beauty, the depth, and the power of her life. Let's first talk about, in terms of what's prompting this discussion, maybe what should not be asked. And what I mean by that, that we... There are some fascinating facts about our imahot, first of all. Um, but I think we should not have to ask the fact that Rivka, Rahel, Leah, Miriam, Deborah, let's go further on, the Nebiah, Esther, Hamalka, that we know zero of their lifespan, no, no information regarding how long they lived. Uh, no indication and no and no news uh, and declaration as to when they were born. Um, only Rachel were told directly when she passed away and implicitly Miriam. Otherwise, no information on their death. We shouldn't ask that question. The reason why we should not is because Sarah is the only one that we have information <clears throat> on those issues. And so therefore, Sarah is the exception, and everyone else is the norm. Um, what else shouldn't we ask? We shouldn't really have to ask what is the most popular question that is asked. And that is that the parasha begins by you, Hayes Sarah, first of the parasha. Me'ashana, Ba'asim Shana, the Sheva Shanim, Shine Hayes Sarah, that her life uh, span. And the years of her life presented in the Torah is broken up into three segments. Instead of saying 127, it says 100 years, 20 years, and seven years. And the reason why we should not just simply ask that is because it's not unusual. Because if you look when Abraham passed away at the end of the parasha, it pretty much uses the exact same words. pasuk zayin. Even, even breaks it up shana, shana, shanim, that way. And in fact, Yishmael next, the same exact structure. So that question that we feel is so intuitive and so obvious is not really a question on its face, at least. Um, and, and the reason for some of these things is that, you know, men are usually uh, whose years we focus on, not because we care so much as some, how long someone lived, but only for the historical purpose of lineage, tracking history, counting generations. Um, and again, we saw that normally counting someone's life for whatever reason, that's what I breaks it up into segments. So what should we focus on? In fact, we should focus on the opposite. We should focus on the unusual fact that the Torah Kedosha decided to tell us singularly about Sarah Imenu's lifespan and her death. And the fact that the Torah, even though it normally does break up lifespan into two or three digit places, but Sarah is the first one in which the Torah presents us with that structure. And therefore, it can be said that the Torah perhaps is demanding of us, begging us to really look at the life of Sarah, to look into, because it's not as apparent as the life of Abraham. And I might even go a step further and say to possibly celebrate the life of Sarah Imenu. And there are a few nuances that sort of urge us to do so, even though I did sort of, I don't want to say mislead you, but I told you that the, the lifespan description is exact with Abraham and Yishmael, but not so exact. Because with Sarah, it says, And with others, like Abraham, it says, 
not Vayihiyu, and they were. And these are Yemeshine Haye Abraham. Vayihiyu, Vayihiyu Haye. And her life was, it's as if Lahav Dils started starting to present a motion picture of the life and times of Sarai Menu. Take notice, please, says the Torah. This is what her life was. I want you to open up the Pesukim and I want you to reflect back on the Abraham Avinu dramatic stories and try to extrapolate different character points, different uh, reactions, different modes of behavior, different highlights of the life of Sarai Menu. And another nuance is the fact that this is different, that in structuring the information of the span of her life, it does repeat at the end the suffix of the pasuk is right. It repeats that phrase, the years of the life of Sarah, and that nuance is certainly distinguishable from other presentations of lifespan, and that also tells us don't just talk about how long she lived, but focus on Haye Sarah. And in fact, just to give you an idea, the first Midrash, the Midrash Rabbah, uh, just notices that very same, uh, you say, um, superfluous language and says to teach us the second repetition of Hashina Haye Sarah, to teach us that Habib Hayehem Shal Sadiqim, them Akom Ba'olam Hazeh, Unolam Habad. Precious is the life of the righteous um, in front of God in this world and the next world. Thus, the repetition, Shine Hayesara. So, we have um, definitely an indication to us, a very strong, um, palatable, um, almost request from Akadosh Baruch Hu, not just to take notice, but to celebrate and talk about the life of Sarah. So, let's do so. And I'm going to say that we're not really going to have a comprehensive analysis. Um, on the different mentionings of Sarah in the various episodes. Perhaps, I don't know, next year or another year, we'll do that. I want to focus on just three points, um, and some of them that you can get from this, this pasuk alone. So let's take a look again. Remember, even though Shana, Shana, Shanim, in the way to break up the, um, you know, the third decimal point, the hundreds, the teens, the two decimal point, and and then the singular shana shana year year years is not unusual because it does say that by others but again sarah is the first and so let's talk about why that is why is the last the sheva shanim why is the last the single digit is well, ironic is the plural one right the hundred digit a hundred year shana in the singular mm. and asrim twenty shana in the singular and then the sheva which is only a single digit, is years shani. Okay. So why is that? So, I mean, really the pshat is that the seven is her last. And the seven, which is what caps all the years, right? And therefore, there's something about the last segment. We break up and we look at the seven in an isolated in a way, in a vacuum. The seven, which caps all the years. It's almost as if to say that the seven... The ending, the um, I like to call it the uh, the twilight, you know, uh, of someone's life, right, is really perhaps the most important part of someone's life. Wherein, in modern society, sometimes when a person gets a little older and gets a little not as strong, they sort of dial it in yeah. and they say it's time to go to Florida. And it's time, and I'm not saying this in any sarcastic manner, I'm just saying this in a true manner. This is the habits of people. It's time to dedicate 35% of my time playing cards. Why? Because I'm old and I'm tired and I earned it. I earned it. And we say, Azita, she's old and she's tired and she earned it. The Torah says, nothing doing. Sheba Shanim. These last digits, single digits, this last segment, of the life instead is and possibly can be the most powerful. And you think of this irony of life where people retire when they're older, they're physically tired, but retire sometimes means retiring 
in a, in a physical and a mental way and, and in an active way and a productive way. Isn't that ironic? The years where the person is most wise, most experienced, most knowledgeable, has the most to give. Hella, now you're retiring. Now is when the world's waiting for you. Now is when the world needs you right now. Sheba Shanim. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to ramp up and work overtime in your business. No, but this means the Torah says Sheba Shanim is when you have the most to offer to the world and to be productive and to give to people and to use your intellect and to use your experience. And I'm not going to give different, you know, advice in terms of modes of, of schedule and of uh, spending of hours and times. You can think of that on your own. But we do know that from Yaakov Abinu, and we certainly know just in the world from some of the greatest people made the greatest accomplishments in the in the you know in the golden years, so to speak. And instead of playing cards, um, they really spent it on very productive activity. And Sarai Menu, perhaps this is a point that's what I was making to us about Sarah, but about old older age, so to speak, in general. That now is the time to really be productive and to take advantage of the beracha that we do have of older age and uh, use um, everything up to now that we built up, experience and knowledge um, and savviness and, and wisdom to be able really to give back to yourself and your family, to Am Yisrael and to Hashem. Point number two, um, we can trace, if you look back in Parashiyot, and look at the appearances of Sarah. Um, you can track her. I have a counting of seven different events that she plays a role in. Really almost never starring in that event, starring role, a side role perhaps. Now again, I said this is not going to be a comprehensive analysis of Sarah Menu, and uh, in the future maybe one day. But if you just list them, you'll, you'll notice that these are not the most joyous of events the events that we see her and really we see her name mentioned or her doing something lech lecha leave your home uh the next event with uh, paro took her essentially kidnapped her right um that could have been pleasant uh, the next event where she decides to give her essentially her maid servant to her husband as a wife or a concubine to have children that couldn't have been easy right um uh, we see her indirectly when the angels spoke to Abraham about the prediction to have a child, mm -hmm. and she laughed inside. She was she was rebuked for that, although that was good news. Um, the next event, Abimelech took her and kidnapped her, um, and then we see her, of course, giving birth to Yitzhak, a happy event. And then the story, the episode where she informed Abraham there was a little quibble between them that he has to throw out. Yishmael Hagad and, and Yishmael from the house. If you just look at those events and in general her life for a moment, this is a woman, first of all, who repeatedly had to uproot and leave. Not just her house, but lands. Right? She left Haran with Kastim, what order with Kastim, Haran, came to Eris Kanan, left Eris Kanan, to Mitzrayim, back to Eris Kanan, besides the fact that she moved from city to city to city within Eris Kanan always moving. She's barren until she was 90 years old. No children till 90. Quite tragic till that point. She's kidnapped two times, right? Uh, very traumatic experiences. And then at the end of her life, where she thought her only child died, and according to Hakamim, at least traditionally, she was never going to see him again. Uh, perhaps she died at that, that moment in time. Really, this is a life full of of difficulty, of hardship, of you could say even suffering. Um, well, what is that message? The Torah says, well, please look at her life. What, what should I look at? Should I look at all the tragedy and the hardship? Yes, indeed. Because Sarah Imenu managed to be Sarah Imenu despite the hardship and the difficulty and the trauma, and all the sacrifice that she had to go through. 
she became Sarah Imenu, not despite that, maybe, maybe even because of those life difficulties. And the truth is that we see over the course of history, many, many hundreds, thousands of examples of the greatest of people who accomplished and achieved through their hardships. The greatest of hachamim had the hardest of lives. And you say hardest, it's, 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 it's difficulties we can't even imagine. Um, you can go way back in history, but you don't even have to go so way back. You can go to some of our recent hachamim, the Biosef Kadol. The author of Morin of Rabbeinu, the author of the Shaharuk, the laws that we follow, the, 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 the water that we drink and survive from, is the person who was an orphan as a child, lost both parents, is the person who lost two wives during his lifetime, who was expelled from Spain and from Portugal, and he accomplished maybe more in Torah Shabbat than any man on the planet Earth. Uh, and there are many, many, many examples before him and after him of greatness. And yet, um, the Torah not only doesn't want us to turn away from the difficult areas, wants to tell us, look, Hayes Sarah was hard, were harsh. And yet, they were accomplished. The achievement was spectacular in the life of Sarah Imenu. And that tells us that, listen, um, don't use hardship as an excuse to feel bad for yourself. And to say, hey, woe is done to me. Look at my life. Hashem says, yes, look at your life. You're living. You can be great. You can be greater even now than you were before, perhaps. And Jewish history has proven that over and over again with the most righteous of men and women. And finally, point number three. I want to just take one of those events and briefly focus on it. Look at the event of her insistence. This came from her. Telling Abraham Abinu, this is last week's parasha, uh, I'm sorry, two weeks ago parasha in, um, in Lech Lecha, where she said to Abraham, listen, I'm old, and apparently um, I'm not having children. She said, this is God. What can I do? How bold this woman um, any other person, there's a person that texted me the other day and says, Rabbi, I can't take it anymore. I'm not married. She's not that old. But everyone around is getting mad. I'm so jealous. I can't control my jealousy. Well, think of a Sarai man. How about that? She is in ripe old age and she's going to take the initiative, not just not be jealous, take the initiative so that Abraham Abinu can produce and the, and the, the mission can continue and the dream can live on Give the maid servant to Abraham to be with and say, I'll build myself from her, which can be taken literally, and which can be, can be taken also conceptually. And she did build herself from that. Excruciating. No jealousy, no anger, only broad perspective, only an understanding of what her place is in this world. What a vision. What, what conviction. What loyalty, what love for Hashem and for the future of Am Yisrael. And she didn't know she was going to have this hack at that point. But this is the sacrifice she made for the, for the nation to continue, so to speak, from Abraham Avinu. So, listen, Sarai Menu, as I said, we can go for a few hours and we go into those episodes and analyze them. But just trying to do justice, at least to the directive of the first Pasu, which is Vayihiyu Hayesara. Take notice of Hayes Sarah. And she acts as not only the paradigm for every young woman, every single Jewish young woman, and tells them, you can be great. In the house, Hineba Ohel, a modest person, a person who takes care of the family, who prays and spiritual, and out of the house, right? We said that Abraham Abinu, uh, not only him, but her, were involved in outreach and bringing people closer. She was out there, and she was talking, and she was converting, and she was teaching. You can be great out of the house also. <clears throat> you can be productive as a righteous, holy Jewish woman in the world at large. Mm -hmm. Anyone who was ever anything in terms of the great females of our nation can point to Sarah and say, I learned from her. 
while she's a paradigm for the young woman, an older woman, an older woman of our nation forever. She also is a model for all of Am Yisrael, where embedded in her of the, some of the great ideals and values upon which this, this nation is built. And, uh, and indeed, Sarai Menu is a life that we not, need not just to take notice of in the shadow of Abraham Abinu, but to celebrate, celebrate the and repeat once more time at the end, look at the life, embrace it, love it, and teach it to your children, and let us model her life forever. Amen, amen.